back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Rachel Fisher, and today we are counting down some really weird stuff that I didn't need to know we did in the past in regards to radioactive stuff. So here we go. Let's count down our list of top 10 dark discoveries found after radioactive events. Number 10, Vita Radium Suppositories. Yeah. What I've discovered while making this list is that after radium was discovered, people became obsessed with it. Like the Gma and Frank's Red Hot commercials, they put that on everything. Vita radium suppositories were developed as a way of relieving our digestive systems a la radioactive material. According to this ad, these suppositories were guaranteed, guaranteed to contain radium, which is exactly the opposite of what we want to see on the back of canisters today. People believe that radium had miracle effects when it came to the human body, saying that they made you glow because they did. These pills were to be inserted into the rectum so they could be dissolved and devoured by the entire body. According to the ad, and I quote, every tissue, every organ of the body is bombarded by its health giving electric atoms. They also implied that it would increase libido. Oh wow. But the only thing that rose to the expectation was the death toll. Number nine, radioactive toy set. Gilbert U238 Atomic Energy Lab was the hottest thing to hit toy stores in the 1950s for a hefty price. The toy set cost was $50 because it was actually radioactive. $50 was a steep price to pay back then. Meanwhile, I can spend that in like a day living here. So fortunately, a lot of parents bought more affordable science sets that didn't have radioactive stuff. The toy as a result was discontinued, not because it was actually poisonous, but because because no one could afford it. Some say it was safe for children to use as it was very carefully constructed, but you know, put it in the hands of like a nine year old boy. <laughs> iffy. The Atomic Energy Lab contained a cloud chamber in which you could see alpha particles traveling at 12,000 miles a second. That would be pretty cool. Like if I was that kid and I didn't know what was going on, I totally would be like, mom, I want that for Christmas. I would have a blast. Pretty impressive, but definitely something rated for kids like 40 and up with, a, with maybe a science degree and like a lab suit. Number eight, Perpetual Sunshine. And no, that's not my nickname, but if you wanna call me that, go for it. Wouldn't it be cool if we all glowed like Alina in Shadow and Bone? Yeah, it definitely would. But like, if someone offers you any kind of radioactive substance, like run, get out of here. Radithor was yet another cure-all remedy said to cure everything under the sun, the deadliest snake oil out there. But I should say, we do use radiation today for things like cancer, but we know more or less what we're doing with it now. Radithor was a patent medicine that featured distilled water and two isotopes of radium. Perpetual sunshine in a bottle is what advertisers called it. And it was one of many radioactive elixirs on the market, but sadly, the more a star glows, the faster it burns out. A popular Radiothor advocate in 1932 eventually developed holes in his bones, skull, and his entire jaw had to be removed. Still, the man sadly died due to radiation poisoning, so not the miracle cure people thought it was. Unless you didn't like him, that's dark. <laughs> That's very dark. Uh, okay. Number seven, Thoradia. From cancerous white face powder to radioactive cream, beauty really does kill. I wonder how much of my makeup on my face um, is slowly killing me. Joke, not a joke. I don't know. Uh. Thoradia was another deadly beauty product introduced by a Parisian beauty company that was all the rage. It boasted having thorium and radium lead to help stabilize and promote blood circulation, tone the facial tissues, eliminate fat and remove wrinkles. Product toured Belgium, Italy, Portugal, Romania, Egypt, and of course, France. Radium's energy was useful as far as creating a natural luminous appearance, but in 1937, the French government put a massive restriction on the sale of products that contained thorium and radium, forcing them to stop using the ingredients. Like, it was almost as if the government was catching on to some not so dewy glow side effects. Beyond cosmetic, the cream was also recommended for scrapes, bruises, herpes, frostbite, you name it. Some clients might not have seen the effects of these chemicals right away, but their later ailments definitely had a relationship to the miracle cure makeup. Number six, radioactive shoe sizers. Why use a measuring tape or those like cool metal feet slidey things when you can just use a nuclear bomb? Okay, well not a nuclear bomb, more like a whole bunch of radioactive materials. I'm honestly just as surprised as you are. I had no idea we were this obsessed with radium for this long. The shoe fitting fluoroscope was a revolutionary new device that changed the way people have their feet measured because apparently rulers didn't work. Despite scientists getting severely injured during the creation of the device, shoe 
shoe stores adored it. Parents would take their growing little boys and girls to the counter to have their feet scientifically sized. They put their feet into the x-ray fluoroscope and the salesman and customer would see the bones in their foot. The customers also got a healthy dose of radiation. What a deal! Fortunately though, by the 1950s these machines were recognized as dangerous and slowly banned state by state until 1970s though Europe continued to use them because they're chic. But decades before bans came into question the dangers of radiation were already public. In the 1920s x-ray pioneers suffered very gruesome and very public deaths. Actual data didn't appear until the 1940s and nobody listened until the aforementioned date. But hey, at least they knew they were a size 7.56 over a 7.5 shoe. That's helpful. Number 5. Radioactive Toothpaste Everyone wants to have a smile that lights up a room. Yeah! Radioactive toothpaste, a joy for dentists around the world. So we know by now that people freak out at radium for breakfast because they were convinced it could cure everything, even bad yellow teeth. A German company called Our Company wanted to get out of the steadily building war business, so they came out with thorium toothpaste in order to divert their supplies away from the Yahtzee, evil German people. Nuclear initiatives, especially after they knew Germany was going to lose the war. Marketed as the scientific toothpaste, they advertised that the radioactive chemicals will be able to hinder the bacteria in the mouth, which I guess would be technically true, therefore creating healthier teeth. But unfortunately, the opposite was true. Like rotting away. It was awful. Number four, the trico system. Look. I hate waxing too. I hate it. I've tried it twice and to this day I refuse to put myself through that kind of pain for a bikini pic. Look, I'm just not going to do it. It's the worst. I get it. It's a struggle. A struggle. The trico system was eager to solve. And it did. Kind of. The trico system was a hair removal device that became a must have in every hair salon in the 1920s. It would remove hair painlessly. All you had to do was sit at a mahogany desk and face a window. When the flip was switched there was no burning. Just a slight hum from the machine and boom, no unwanted hairs. Except there were some horrendous side effects. Yes, it would remove the hair, but soon women and men would develop cancerous ulcers, carcinoma, and death. The reason they were using x ray technology, which is, as we know, radioactive. It would be administered to the skin for a few times and would require anywhere from 15 to 20 treatments to be effective. When the trico machine was leased out, however, there was no mention of what the technology they used was, and the person administering it wasn't very well qualified either. Right? Clients were just marveled that it worked so well until it slowly burned their face off. So, bottom line, if someone says anything is a miracle cure, just uh, maybe like scream at them and run. Number three, the Radium Girls. This story breaks my heart. It's so sad. Uh, the Radium Girls became so radioactive that if you stand on their graves today with a Geiger counter, it will still jump like 80 years later. Small town girls from New Jersey were hired by a local factory to paint clock faces of luminous watches. How did they glow, you ask? Well, with glow in the dark, radioactive paint. They painted 250 dials on average daily, and in order to ensure that their lines were clean, they would lick the end before dipping it into the paint. Every few times. They were paid in pennies, around 27 cents per watch today. That would, that's what it kind of breaks down to. So they worked tirelessly, each day swallowing more and more paint. Slowly but surely, the girls were eaten from the inside, their bones dissolving with each stroke of their brush. In the 1920s, 4,000 workers were hired by the US and Canada. The inventor of the glow in the dark paint himself died of radioactive exposure. The first death of the girls, though, was Molly Magia, died after suffering burning ulcers and agonizing aches, her jawbone dissolved, and so on. The USRC covered it up, saying they weren't responsible, until dozens more died via extreme tumors and horrific other illnesses resulting from the radium. Number two, Marie Curie. Marie Curie was a brilliant scientist, a pioneer in many ways for women in the field. Her primary accomplishment was expanding our knowledge of radioactivity. But they didn't take any of the precautions we now know to take today. In fact, Marie and her husband Pierre were both buried in lead caskets to contain the radiation they accumulated in their bodies while alive. Even their furniture was radioactive. Marie discovered two new elements, radium as I've mentioned, and polonium, and was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. Using the new discovery of radium, Curie 
discovered it could be used as the gamma ray source in x-ray technology, advancing the field. She also invented smaller, more portable x-rays that medics could use on the battlefields. However, the Currys overlooked what prolonged exposure to radiation could do. She even used to carry tubes of radium in her pockets. In the 1920s, it finally caught up to her. Her health started to deteriorate rapidly and developed a severe form of leukemia. She passed away on July 4th, 1934. Pierre died years earlier in 1906 from an accident in the street. He was run over by a horse drawn cart. Because he was so young though, his body held on to more radioactive materials. So his body was actually more radioactive by the end than Marie's was because by that point it would have run through. Interesting, but terrifying. And last but not least, you knew this was coming, the atom bomb. Hands up if you think every world leader should get rid of their nuclear devices. But they won't, sadly, which is a terrifying thought. After all, no one buys a weapon without having planned to use it. And if you look at the aftermath of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, well, one of us is going to be next. The bomb at Hiroshima destroyed two thirds of the city's building in a flash of light and killed 60,000 by the end of 1945. Some were killed directly, others years later due to their injuries. Decades later, survivors of the bombings were still pulling debris from beneath their skin, like little shards of glass, as well as enduring horrific medical conditions like cancer, kidney diseases. The list goes on. Three days after Hiroshima, they dropped another on Nagasaki. Today, the cities have found new life and would hardly be recognized after 75 years. However, the memories of what happened remain and how could they forget? Hibakusha is the term used for survivors of both Hiroshima and Nagasaki and many like Hiroshi Harada take action for disarmament and advocate for world peace. Of course they didn't know what we know now, but it sure makes you wonder what we will wish we had known today. <laughs> Definitely for sure. I hope you enjoyed today's list everyone. If you did, let us know. I've been your host Rachel Fisher. I'm going to go take my makeup off and sleep. And until next time, take care folks. Oh,